Amen. Let's rise to our feet and pray in the Holy Ghost. Just pray in the Holy Ghost. Nako soto baki adosh. Ato baki adabash. Anaz to baki tazite. Nama kotoba da bazia. Banda badabadozia. Shapa kotobande. Branda pose kanta baziatos. Shipa kata baki adoshia. Yes, Lord. We ask that you feel to overflow, to overflow, to overflow in the name of Jesus. Father, we ask that once again your word will come to us clearly, shaping our lives of God, causing an increasing formation of the nature of Christ in our lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's have a seat. I trust that God will continue to bless us more in this meeting. So, I want to just say two things before I go to the message. One, um, why the sacrifice of righteousness is very important is that, oh, let's say a local church, most local churches that have prophetic DNA, they have the tendency not to open to other streams in the body of Christ. And that tendency is one of the reasons why do you have the influence that those streams are having. Check the streets with the body of Christ. They are not a closed system. They are open to other streams. Also, there's a tendency because of their capacity to send to the spirit, maybe issues to be the church. So they have a tendency to walk in a sectarian spirit of criticism. And then the people that have the scepter, they criticize them. That is not good to people with doctrine. Hello. It's not given on accurate doctrine. Those fathers, they know God, you know, so it's not given an accurate doctrine. So when they came to know God, based on what was doing in that time in that season, they had the scepter. Scepter would not just be passed anyhow. So it's, it's real. You cannot name in Nigeria five prophetic churches with nationwide. I'm serious, just can't you. But check with movement churches. There are many of them. This Abuja has influence not just in Abuja. Beyond Abuja. Are we together? You see many one of the churches with influence. You see many evangelical churches with influence. Some of these octodos, they have influence. Are we together? You will see the traditional CAC have a major what? Influence. That you will see. So that's of find what they have said in the spirit, which at times even misinterpreted, so to color their attitude towards father figures. It's terrible. And that in denies influence. Denies what? Good. I know people in the political movement in our nation that are heavyweight. But these guys don't have the influence. They may be listening to me in case they are online, but I'm telling you the truth. Attitude towards the father figures is a major, major issue. We are online, so I can code it. One of the major father, or the major father in this nation, I had the privilege of seeing him January in 2020. And I can tell you, many of us are wrong about him. I was about that. I have a privilege of meeting him one on one. And I can say that the things I've had shared about prophetic guys about this man, many are wrong about him. Amen. May God help us in Jesus' name. The other one, we're discussing the house, you know, about meditation. And we mentioned that in the house, we were like, okay, can one meditate, you know, on nature and stuff? And I said, yes, but it should be from God's word. I'm saying that, let's look at some. Say that because we, um, we did mention that while we were praying the other time. You know, Psalm 19 showed us the expression of God, the creative expression of God. And the redemptive expression of God. So you will see it saying that to the chief musician, a psalm of David. Thank you, sir. Amen. My voice is renewed. I'm giving a new voice. I'm sounding different. I love this one. Glory to Jesus. I appreciate the technical team. Thank you so much. The meeting, I'll give you pure water. <laughs> All right. I'll give you pure water.
In the name of the Lord, <laughs> receive the word. <laughs> All right. In Psalm of David, he said, The heavens declare the glory of God. The God here is on the L name of God. The glory of L. I was together. And the firmament shirt is Andy Walk. Day on today, all that is speech. Tell you that nature can speak. I was together. Nature speaks. People like Enoch had no Bible. I was together. So I did not work with God. That's why when God wanted to speak to Abraham, there was no Bible. God was speaking to Abraham from nature. Dust of the earth, stem of the seashore, stars of the heavens. Hallelujah. Because why? In their days, there was no Bible. So God spoke to them more through nature. Said so today, utter speech, night unto night, short, knowledge. This is a revelation you can get from nature. So night unto night, short, what? Knowledge. There's no speech, no language, where your voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all the earth and their words to the ends of the world. In them, as he said, a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom, coming out of his chamber, rejoicing as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the hand of the heaven, and his second unto the ends of it, and there is nothing eat from the eat thereof. And I said, the law of Jehovah. The law there is not hell. Everything that was said at first has to be with creation. The hell names of God are creative names of God. El, El Shai. I was together. All those are the creative names of God. All the hell names of God. Now, there's one called the Jehovah names of God. They are the redemptive name. Jehovah Rapha. You know, Jehovah, uh, you know, all those names. They are the redemptive names of God. So here he said that, so he switched from the creative names. That's to do with nature. Or creating, I was together. Redemptive name. He now said the law of the Lord is what? It's perfect. That means the law of Jehovah is perfect. God has used in the first verse, six verses, it's not like the creative names of God. The name of God has used in the next verses, it's not about like the redemptive names of God. So it said that the law of Jehovah is what? Perfect. Conversing what? The soul, which is transformation of the soul. The testimony of the Lord is what? Sure. It make, it's making wise the simple. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is what? Pure. Lightning eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean. Enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous all together. More to be said are they than gold, yea, than much fine gold, sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is the servant warned, and in keeping them the great reward. Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret fault. Keep back thy servants also from several sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then shall I be upright and I shall be innocent from the great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart. And what? And what? That one from the teacher is a different one from the one in Joshua 1. But let's just continue. Be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength, my redeemer. But what of true house is this? It's always better to approach any form of meditation from scriptures. So, if I'm going to look into nature about the oak tree, I want to look at it from what people say about oak tree. Not just from a random expression. Now, we have the scriptures. So, when you say that, you are the part of the Lord, you know, trees of righteousness. There, the reason is that you are the part of the Lord, oaks of righteousness. And what's powerful about that oaks? The length of oaks as root down is the same length outside. If the oak is two meter outside, it will be two meter root inside. Do you get that? So planting that you cannot be uprooted easily. <laughs> right? So that's the picture of God. That's why it's this oak tree that is there. That's the picture that God is painting, not just any tree. Amen? You will flourish like a palm tree. So how was the flourish of a palm tree? Palm tree is useful in diverse ways. There's not on a palm tree that's not useful. Are we together? So, talking about diverse, multifaceted breakthrough. No, no, just meditate on palm tree. No, from scripture. Scripture describes that there's a flourishing like a palm tree. So, I want to understand that. In understanding that, I will see that everything about palm tree, from the seed, from the sh everything, everything in the production, almost everything, there's something that's not useful for the palm tree. Amen. So, if I want to study there, I'm not just going to study, let me just study there. No. I was that as there pants after the waters, my soul pants after you. So I want to see how my soul should pant after God. 
I have to know what does it mean in natural for deer to pant after water. So my meditation in that place is going to be on that. I was going to not just study deer randomly. It's about swearing like the eagles. How do eagles swear? In fact, the only thing that is this. When we talk about the swearing of the eagles, they forgot one thing. That actually, it is storm that increases the swearing of the eagles. So once you are like the eagle, you are asking for challenges. <laughs> I'm serious. You are asking for challenges. Because the story has to do with the eagle swore, whether birds are running away from storm, eagle entered the storm and then spread his wings and so on. So if I continue to sound like eagles, what are you considering? <laughs> Glory to Jesus. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. So meaning that if I go to start, if I go to look at that, for example, now the anointing oil, the the, the plants you use for the anointing oil. You need to go and study about them. You have understanding of what they are. And at times, people go to meditate on how a particular um, item, let me use the word item, in nature is used throughout scriptures. Like M Y R R H, that's man. They it's used throughout scripture. It's always connected to suffering, it's always connected to something like pain. Are we together? So you need to study that. Cassia, as it used in scripture. Aloes, as it used in scriptures. So it will help. Why am I saying that? I've seen people run mad. <laughs> in trying to get God. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. So if you don't stay with scripture, you may attract a different spirit. So stay with scripture. I learned to pray up in the Holy Ghost. You should do what? And stay, scripture. and stay under a leadership. Be part of a local church leadership. On that one, I don't want to go too deep into that. But there's a danger not being part of the local church leadership. It can be argued, but I've said it over the years. I've met people, and I've seen the dangers in their life. I've seen the limitations they had because they're not part of the local church. And they still live in denial up to date. I pray that God have mercy on them in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So God will help us in Jesus' name. So we need to also note that so it will help us. If I study scripture, you see that even the cities in the scripture, there is a message in them. If you study them all through scripture, the cities, their names, you know, you see that. All right. So I just mentioned that to us before we move on. Did he bless us? Yeah. That I was supposed to mention. Yes, I think I'm remembering it. Sacrifice of obedience. Have I said anything about anything particular about it? I don't think so. Uh, that is not about um, not related to fornication and all that. Uh, related to God. Have I said anything about it? Okay. So, for example, now God may want to increase your capacity. Are we together in the kingdom anointing? And they will give an instruction that does not make sense. It might. If you obey that instruction, that means you obeying it will cost you. Are you with me? But if you obey it, the dynamics of your life will change. It's a kingdom anointing. Let me give you a personal one. Jesus is going to the cross. Are we together? I remember January 2009 when God spoke to me that I should go and learn in Malaysia. There was a man of God in Nigeria, in Lagos. If I put 5,000 in my car, I can visit him every day. So it doesn't make sense to be good to Malaysia. Because the flight fee of Malaysia is many, 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 5,000. <laughs> so it doesn't make sense to go to Malaysia. But I, I, I cannot judge the vision I saw. And I saw none of God that's in Malaysia. You know, that's good to Malaysia to go and learn. So it means that I got to get a passport. I have to go to Abuja for interview, do my visa. I have to pay a lot of money for my flight. The conference was all free. I have to pay for the conference. They are not lodging me free. I have to pay for where I'm going to stay. And then I will pay for my feeding. I have to still go with money to the meeting. So that's how I went to Malaysia for the first time. I got there. It was suffering for that first year. You know why? Their food and my stomach were not compatible. If I somebody look at that and say, Pastor Debo, your stomach is not international. I said, yes. It is Nigerian. <laughs> ah, I ate one rice. It was brown rice, my dear friends. I went to vomit and vomit and vomit. 
Life has only to change. I was just buying bread <laughs> with Coca Cola <laughs> for my life. <laughs> you know, I just went, let's leave this place. That at the point, but there was one day and I entered to the seven food, the garlic smell. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. And they like garlic in that place. <laughs> you know, so there was some free of food. And then I went with Nigerian suit, or let's call it coat. <laughs> now, Malaysia is like Nigerian weather, but you know, in their, in their houses, they, they increase their AC a lot. So that conference, because it's having a lot of international people, the man of God, they increase the AC to international standard. So at times, like 10 degrees, like 9 degrees, my coat or suit was a singlet. <laughs> ah, the first thing I was shaking. And I was trying to do Jebu, you know, I was trying to manage money. I didn't want to spend so much on something. So I had to go and buy. So I'm talking about it was going itself was a really big deal. Guess there's another thing. In fact, at the airport, because of Nigerians that have really done a lot of things in the country, I was delayed for six hours. Then I was still lecturing, you know. They said that they want to be sure that I'm not here for something else. Uh -uh. Hey, me, a old lecturer, I was like, look at these people. You know, you are like, <laughs> I was even angry. I was even your country self. <laughs> I was even for six hours. Even for six hours. They know Yoruba, Nigeria. They know Alsa, Nigeria. They know Ibo, Nigeria. The Ibo brother that was there, I said Ibo brother, Ibo, Nigeria that was there. I asked him to, he had, he had this Nigerian man, Malaysian team, so I asked him for his phone. So I can call the school I was going to, so they can talk to him. It was a prophetic training. It's called prophet. The guy said I must pay. I looked at him. I looked at the guy. Thank God, I just had boldness. I walked out of where they put us. I went to go and buy the same. Place the same. Placed, I'm putting everything. Put the call across those people. And then give the phone to their immigration officers. They talked to them, they assured them. So they allowed me to enter. That's how I entered. But I can tell you the truth. Going to that place changed many things. I was together, but it was costly. Because at the point, I was calculating how much is land in Nigeria for me to build my own house. I was already spending more than that. <laughs> Amen. That first time, I spent like 650000 650000 in 2009 is not small money. Hello. Even now, it's still not small money in a sense. But then, you know, in terms of purchasing power, how did I come up with? I just came up with CDs. I took it to my wife. <laughs> when we open my bag, it's CD, 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 and books like that. Now, if I don't obey that instruction, that sort of doesn't make sense. Are you, are you with me? It was weird. I took the second time. I was delayed again. The third time, I went to my wife, so they did not delay me. <laughs> they like married people. So I told her, you're a favor. It's good to come here with you. Just for the money. Yeah, because every time I go with my wife, ha, ah, that's it, you're trying to go in. You know? But when you go alone like this, they'll be scanning you, scanning you like. But later on, they say, I've come many times, they stop troubling my life. So my point is that, God can give an instruction that will change your life. How do you respond to it? We see a major of miracles, you know, in our meetings. One thing that God gave me one time was, he said to me one day, he said, go and study Kumui. I'm not used to Pastor Kumui's messages too much. In the beginning of studying Pastor Kumui, it was a level of struggle to me. Not that Pastor Kumui is okay. Just I'm not used to the style of his message. So because I'm not used to it, no, I'm used to charismatic preachers. It's charismatic in a different way. And because what is preaching is different. So it took some time. In those early days, ah, it took some time. But then, I started to see patterns. I want the God showed me some things. From there, the miracle we had increased. Amen. So many of us, we are giving instruction. We don't follow it. You wake up one morning, you feel strongly that you study Daniel for the whole of that month. Then you start. And then by the third day, you have forgotten Daniel. Nothing will change that way. Listen to me. Instructions are part of the kingdom expressions. There is no way you work with God without instructions. Imagine that when I went to that portal court and I came back and I knew that I need money. Instead of putting money, as God said, put it for the building fund. There's no building here, though. <laughs> We've not even bought land. 
Maybe if I disobey, maybe it will abort the process. Am I talking to us? Maybe. God is possible. Maybe it will abort it. So, I'm emphasizing service obedience in line with you responding diligently to any divine instruction that you are really convinced of given to you. Don't joke with it. Are we together? Don't joke with it. Don't let people talk you out of it. You can't talk me out of a divine instruction. Amen? Are we really together? It's very important not to joke with divine instruction. It is what? Very important. Don't joke with divine instructions. Don't joke with divine instructions. Don't joke with divine instructions. Hallelujah. Of recent I had the leading that was around leading, I could not do some things in February. I had to reject ministrations in February. I was even preaching in church in February. I can tell you that what I was done with what God was telling me to do, I'm a far, far, far better person. A lot of things have changed. If I don't realize why there was a shop for that instruction, because for the first time in February, I had four major meetings. I had to say no to all of them. Meaning that any strong that will change your life, take it to this level, the environment will contend for it. A lot of good things will come for you. You have to make up your mind and say what? No. Am I talking to us? Do we get that? So, in that type of obedience, that's very important that you respond to God's will. Don't just say you want to please men. Respond to God's will. Respond to God's will. Make up your mind to respond to God's will. And then, now, in response to God's will, we should not be naughty. We should not be stubborn. Say, I'm doing God. I don't care the way people feel. No. Respond to God's will. And then, in which term? To say no. Without being careless. What I mean by that? Don't say no like I don't care. I want to do God's will. Say no, knowing that people that will be talking to you, their emotions too should not be hot or not really. People may still be hot, but don't be arrogant and say no. I might get to the point. I'll get to my point. Some people, because they want to do God's will, they don't just care. Mm -mm. It should not be like that. You should care about people and still know how to decline. Does that make sense to us? God will help us in Jesus' name. So that area, I want to really emphasize is that God can give you instructions that will alter your life and you have been because to you in obeying that instruction. This last one, 2016, I woke up in the morning and the smell of the food was already coming from the kitchen and I heard clearly, Start a fast. And God spoke to me 21 days fast. If I want to fast normally, if I want to fast normal, normal, normally, I will start reducing my food like 10 days to my fast. So my body can be adjusting a bit. I don't fast any, I don't fast carelessly for my health's sake. My body can be adjusting. So it, if my fast is tomorrow, what I'm going to eat today, I will not eat so I mean not eat so I mean large quantity of food though. But whatever I'm going to eat will satisfy me. Do you get the point? Yeah. That's, that's what I do normally. So I just woke up in the morning and I hear that I know that it was the Holy Ghost. So I negotiated that can we change the day? <laughs> ah. I said, your food is ready. <laughs> I told her that uh, I normally have to want to fast a long time. I was start telling my wife ahead of time, oh, that, hey, I want to fast too. It's a long one, no, 21 days. Old. I was start telling her, you know, I'll start preaching fasting so that she will not disturb me and then she can agree at, as well with me. So I told her that I'm starting a fast today. So I, I could not tell her the number of days because she's a pharmaceutical person. So a pharmacy will come into play. Yeah, uh, just like that. You just wake up and say you are fasting. So I, I, I told her that I will tell you whether I'm done. And that I'm not breaking every day. That I will just take fruit every evening. <laughs> you take fruit every evening, yes. So she said, for protein, I should take egg. Okay, yes, ma. I will take egg. Ah, it was. And God did not say I should not take egg. So I said, I will take egg. I mean, for protein. <laughs> so I started this fast. So. Ha. It was a very difficult fast. I survived the first day. I thank God. So the next day, I pray for strength. To wasn't it, there was no dream, there was no vision. Scripture was just good. It was so spectacular. You know, 
As long as you are fasting like that, and God just give you one encounter, bam, the spirit charges. This is what they so charging. Ah! So I prayed, prayed. There was a lady in our house, very good girl. She said I wanted to cook one nice food. And I just came out of the room. Normally, I, you know, I should have brought the plate to me and said, Pastor, you should eat now. I said, get the baby in Satan. Ah! Said, yes! I told her that this is Satan. It was fatty. You know, you should believe it. was fatty. I said, get the baby in Satan. It was fatty, man. She's, she told me, that. get the, ah! So she knows that. Give me Satan. Ah, kill the day. I'm trying to survive this fast. <laughs> if God knows that, this one, I'm thinking that, how will I finish? You don't have to do all of this. Yeah, it's too far. How are we together? It was serious. One of the people that was staying with us, that was supposed to screw things like that, she was serving. She studied cooking. Let's put it that way. She studied what? As in, as in you don't put a cook for hotels. Although, that's what she studied. She came back home last season. She made these vegetables. Oh my God. <laughs> Properly embellished with all kind of living things that are not dead things. <laughs> and my wife will not bring it to the room. She'll be eating it, chatting with me. So I said, God, you know that this thing is affecting me. So we are, this is what we are going to do. I'll give her money. Before she goes back, she will do my own, put it in the freezer. Yes. After I've broken my fast, I will come back to the vegetable. Ah, it was that serious. But you know, throughout the fast, I had only three major encounters. Then I had all trans, and then enter my preach. I noticed that. I noticed strange trans, whatever I'm saying. But I had three major downloads from heaven. That's in three major. They've all come to pass. I said, okay, I did. I had one strange. There was one that I had one strange encounter that I, I, I don't want to share. So, you know, but I can tell you. That fast changed many things. It was very difficult. Because how can you just wake up? And the girl says, guy, don't eat. Oh. And you're not eating for 21 days. You know, the... <laughs> Why you not for 21 days? <laughs> you know, you say you're good on your fast. You have purpose for your fast. You have plan for your fast. There's no plan. So what kind of fast? You're waiting on God every day. So Holy Spirit, what is happening today? We are not eating. Why are we not eating today? <laughs> so, you will tell me, that's how you have to know the Holy Ghost. Because you have to ask, even this one that we did, that I just finished, like, okay, Holy Spirit, I don't, have, I don't have an agenda. I didn't plan to fast this month. So, what is your agenda for today? They okay, initiate the talk, and we start talking and discussing. And it was good. In fact, this one I thought to be like that last one. So, I told people not to disturb my life. But this one, ah, from day one to the end, it was very easy. I was a longer day than the other one. What's my point here? We must respond to the release of God in our life personally. Hello? Stay from the door of God in your life. You cannot grow without personal divine instruction. Hello? You cannot what? God will help us in Jesus' name. So tonight I want us to briefly look at the sacrifice of prayer. All of us here will pray. We all do what? We all pray. Sacrifice of prayer. Psalm 141, verse 1 and 2. You no, know, we are talking about New Testament spiritual sacrifices. So we talk about actual things in the morning. Now this one's about prayer. Okay. A psalm of David, Lord, I cry unto thee, make haste unto me, give ear unto my voice, when I cry unto thee. Let my prayer be set forth before thee as what? Talk to me as what? As incense. As incense. And the lifting up of my hands as what? The evening sacrifice. Are we together? So, Bible talks about prayer as a form of what? Sacrifice. And this one is symbolic to the altar of incense, which is in the only place in the Old Testament, but it's the oldest of all in the New Testament. I don't have to go there because I want to just get this. Psalm 15 verse 8 says, The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to the Lord. Psalm 15 verse 8. But the prayer of the upright is his delight. Now, it's talking about sacrifice in the comparison. So, prayer is very important. All manners of prayer is very important. Prayer is critical to the believer's life. Are we together? And prayers are actually powerful in the way that 
they are deathless. And so they transcend generations. And understanding prayer is really, really critical. Are we together? You will notice that these are disciples, they observed it so much that the only thing we were told that they asked that you should teach them is what? How to pray. I think look 11. Look 11. Look 11. Let me for look 11. In look 11, you know, after they have seen the Jesus in prayer, what has to be as success in prayer, they asked, he came, said that he came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, that means when he was done with the prayer, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray as John also taught his disciples. So prayer is something that is very serious that they asked him to teach them. And then it also implies that the, the church of today should be bothered about that. If any disciples ask that you should teach us to pray, the church to be called some about teaching prayer. We should have teachings on prayer. There are believers that don't know how to pray. There are people that don't know which kind of prayer to pray in a situation. It doesn't mean that there are times that answers will be delayed, but there are different prayers and they are governed by different kind of rules. Are we together at all? So prayer is really critical to our work in our priesthood. Priesthood assessment is a prayer expression. I was going to pray special, and that's very, very important. So, it's even important that the church that we learn consistently about prayer every year. And then we we'll practice what we learn every year. In fact, people that really pray have a journal of prayer. In that journal, they put the date of their request, they put the date of answer. When you do that, you'll be shocked that some requests are answered almost immediately. Some take some weeks, some take years to be answered. You know, so prayer is that dimension that we need to really. Pay attention to us and sacrifice in our work with God. Now, look at it was where Jesus said a parable to them and said that men ought always to pray and not to do what? Faint. Men ought always to pray and not to do what? Faint. Now, it's like saying that the spiritual habitat of a believer is sustained by prayer. That means you breathe. That means that prayer, like that prayer is your respiratory system. Are we together? Like what? Respiratory system. So, when you stop praying, what happens? You start fainting. Are we together? Well, stop it out to be what? Say to me, men ought always to pray and not to faint. So when you stop praying, you start to faint. Are we together? And so it's not that we should take serious. Now, you don't want to engage in religious expression every day. Your prayer should be dynamic every day, not just religious. Amen. Now the golden censer or the other incense in scriptures in the in the in the tabernacle. Relates to daily ministration, which is both morning and evening. As a picture of praying every day, both morning, afternoon, and evening. You will see that Daniel had that as a lifestyle habit. Lifestyle habit. Daniel prays in the morning, he prays in the afternoon, he prays in the evening. If I was in for Jerusalem, he would open the windows towards what? Jerusalem. Daniel prayed so much that when they could not find any way to get him into trouble, they went to me and said, Let's ask that they can create a law that 30 days, even of 30 days, that 30 days nobody should pray. I think that we just say, okay, let me apply wisdom. So I don't know to be Let me just show you just 30 days. Let me not pray for 30 days. But Daniel knew how powerful that, I mean, the power of prayer in his life. He could not have four 30 days of not praying. Now, how many of us have done two months not praying? That means that the value that Daniel plays on prayer, we don't place on prayer. How about together? Prayer is undervalued by most believers. Most believers are not understood by most believers. That never understood the value, you understood the value of prayer. So you couldn't afford it 30 days. So, you know, if I Bible said, I believe they said it. You know, you can even say this way. Shebi is to what I was praying to. I went together. He could decide not to open the window. They won't see him now. So they were watching whether he's going to pray again. Maybe you we're not told. Because you two think about it. Why would I never open the window? I mean, you can't decide not to open the window. They said they won't see you. But he opened the window, he came towards Jerusalem and started to pray. Maybe the instruction was that open the window and begin to pray towards Jerusalem. And so he has to follow that instruction in prayer. I was gonna, I said, maybe we're not told. But he prayed the way that he will be caught. <laughs> yes, now. <laughs> okay, for example, now, you know, my area, I, I pray, and some of that I pray out. But there was a point that I don't want them to even know I'm praying. So and then, that was, the time was okay, I'll change myself to maybe to pray in old age, quietly. So I said, I learned to pray quietly. So better now I pray, don't even know that I'm praying in the house. 
So I would have thought that they would just pray quietly and shut the windows. They would just thought that I want to pray. Shut the door. <laughs> I've been out. But then they was opening the windows. So I think that there was something about that. Maybe God gave an instruction to do that. And the people, they caught him. But don't forget, when Daniel got the answer for the case of dream, how did it happen? They prayed. They did what? They prayed. Daniel, as a very busy man, was fasting for 21 days. Hello? So, what I'm trying to say is that many of us have not yet really valued prayer. Many of us are just praying for, you know, we are not praying from that point of your breath, your respiratory system. Many of us are praying from the place of we should pray. We should pray. So when you pray, you feel good that you have prayed. You will do that transaction, you don't have any feedback. You just feel good that you have prayed. What has changed in your life, what has changed in prayer, may not be there, but I, 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 I pray today. <laughs> it's not supposed to be like that. Every engagement in prayer should have definite supply in our life. Are we together? So, the service of prayer is very, very important. And in scriptures, you know, um, the priesthood of Jesus even shows the importance more. Jesus now is in heavenly places. And Hebrews 75 tells us that he ever lived to make intercession for us. Ah, that is 24 hours. Jesus is doing what? Interceding for us. I mean, that means that in the heavenly realm, prayer ministry of Jesus has not stopped. He's still praying. Amen. He's still praying. And that's really, really important and critical. So God will help us in the name of Jesus. So when Jesus was here on earth, prayer was a signature in his ministry. Are you with me? Now in the heavens, it is what? And that's the in his ministry. So that shows that prayer is really critical and important. In Mark 135, I remember that Jesus went to a solitary place and did what? He was praying. And when they came to me, they said that all men are seeking you. They are looking for you. Uh, he said, ah, let's go to other towns. Meaning that when Jesus is praying, he receives daily instruction what to do per day. So he knows that he's not to respond to those all men seeking you. Is to go to the next town. Are we together at all? So our prayer should be taught such, such that, you know, it's batting something alive on a daily basis, weekly basis, monthly basis. Our prayer should be something that is progressive. But by we actually, it's a relationship that is really real. Am I talking to us? That's really real in God. I mean, making our lives to move towards God more and more. So we start about Jesus in scriptures. In Luke 5, 16, we are told that, and he withdrew himself into a wilderness, and then he prayed. The time we are getting to 17, he was teaching on the starting day, and I was there was power of God available. The power of God was available, you know, to heal. It was available to heal, meaning that Jesus generated power every time he also prayed. Are we together? So, what kind of prayer was Jesus praying? So, when they asked Jesus to teach us to pray, it was an important thing. And you see, a lot of disciples in Old Testament, I mean, in the book of Acts, you see them praying. They prayed in Acts 1. You know, we were waiting there with the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost came upon them in that upper room. And then you see them pray in Acts chapter 4. And when they prayed, it's like the place shook. If it's like, you can't read the book of Acts, and you are not see prayer as a signature. You see Peter praying. You see Paul and Silas praying. So prayer is like littered everywhere in the book of Acts to show that prayer is important to the life of a disciple. Am I speaking to us? So prayer is very, very important. And we need to know a lot about it. So Jesus, our example, is awesome. Jesus went in Luke 9, 20 to 31. You know, the Bible says that he went to um, what we call the point of transfiguration. I read from here. Now it came to pass about eight days after this saying that Jesus took Peter, John, and James and went up on the mountain to pray. As he prayed, the appearance of his face was what? Altered. It was what? Altered. That means the place of prayer, your fashion is being altered. Your appearance is being altered. Are we together? You are being changed by praying. Hallelujah. I tell the truth. Prayer changes you. It does not only give you answer. Prayer prepares you to receive the answer. And that preparation of you becoming, receiving the answer, you are changed. And at times, prayer prepares you to become the answer. Are we together? Prayer prepares you to receive answers. Are we together? And the process, you are changed to the person that can receive the answer. Do you get that? And sometimes, prayer prepares you to become the answer. Amen. So, that's what I want to understand. And then he says that, you know, they went on the mountain to pray. As they prayed, a prayer of his face was altered. His robe became white glistening. And behold, two men talked with him. Who were Moses 
and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his disease, which was about to accomplish Jerusalem. So, prayer is a place of encounter. Say encounter. That means that you are not supposed to be praying for a counter. But for a praying person, you will come into encounters. You know, one man of God was talking about the father of it in Nigeria. You know, he said that one day went to see this man of God. And then he said he was praying. So he waited. And then after a long time, the man came out and said, I'm sorry. That actually, as I was praying, as I came. That that's how they come. As I will come, Jeremiah will come. So the man was like... <laughs> Now, the father of faith that we're talking about does not know anything about cloud of witnesses. He doesn't teach it. But he's expressing it. He doesn't say it on pulpit. If not, that this other man of God went to visit him, and this man of God said it to him, we won't know. And the prophetic people want to die with cloud of witnesses and they're attacking the fathers. The father they're attacking is expressing what they are not expressing, that they are just teaching. Let me say this. I discovered personally that there is such an experience. The critical spirit brings poverty. Not just financial poverty. <laughs> poverty in quality of anointing. Poverty in quality of life. Even quality of marriage can resist poverty. Are we together? So, we must do all that we can do to stay from a critical spirit. It's better to be an intercessor to be a, than to be an accuser. Are you with me? Tell your neighbor, it's better to be an intercessor than to be an accuser. It's better for you to be a gap filler, bridging the gap, than to be a fault finder. Or somebody just discussing the gap. Stand in the gap. Don't just talk about the gap. To stand in the gap for you to be an intercessor. Have we together at all? I'm telling you the truth. I've seen people that are solid. But the hindrance in their life is the critical spirit. And they do not see it. And they have, they have, they have married critical spirit and it's affecting them. Their work is just like they are on one spot, dancing and for years. And you know, devil has deceived them. They are, because they are preaching the truth. That's why they are not growing in their church. It's a lie. Big lie. It's what? It's deception. Yeah, because they are preaching the truth. They are, the truth that people don't love the truth. Ah, oh, not so. Your critical spirit gives you poverty. Amen. I'm serious though. <laughs> this is what Jesus did. So, prayer is a place of divine encounters and divine disclosure. Divine what? Talk to me. Divine what? And divine disclosure. So, if you are someone that have a lifestyle of prayer according to scripture, not just being religious, there is something about you. There's a pulsation. In fact, there are times that you're just looking for a place to just, you know, to just have a talk with God. And in fact, you can pray almost anywhere. Am I talking to us? And you will get to know God on an intimate level. You will know the Holy Spirit. If you do something and something went wrong, you can ask you what, what happened? Why did this happen? And then we'll tell you the reason why. I was in a meeting. I did something some two, three years ago. So I I'm like, what is what happened here? And Lou says, that thing, you're not meant to do it that way. I don't ever do it that way. That in the next session, this is what I'm going to do. You do it this way, you see what's going to happen. And I found the Holy Spirit. It was a different session. <laughs> That's what I was praying so, but there's what I put that result. Next session we get more than that result. I will to get that all. I was in another meeting. There was a move in the meeting. Strong of the spirit. So, you know, times you see the cloud. You just flow with the cloud. Look, we'll say, don't flow with the cloud, though. I told you to come here to share what is, what is happening in the meeting, what has happened in the meeting, and what will happen after the meeting. Just share and leave. So, I had to calm down the meeting. <laughs> Some people said that I punctured the move of God. <laughs> that I do not know how to host the presence. I do not blame them. I know the Holy Ghost. After that, the Ghost said to me that you pass a test. Our next meeting was that 2019 meeting. Ah, that meeting. Eh? <laughs> I don't say God moved. Ask me that they will tell you that God moved. <laughs> Amen. 
You know, tests are passed. I pass the tests of not living by performance. You can be a minister that just perform me. You know, you are not meant to use your gift of being authorized by God. Do you get that? You can become lawlessness. Now, but without the work with the Holy Ghost, you know. Because that was happening in that meeting, I was asking, Lord, what should we do? And there was a meeting I was in. As I was preaching, bam, there was a response of the Holy Ghost. I said, Lord, should we follow the flow? The Holy Ghost said, follow the flow. That's where the, that's where the preaching ended. Are you with me? So, there are times I was meant to follow the flow. There are times that the flow is going to disturb the teaching. And the teaching doesn't need to be done. So what do you do? You stay with the teaching. That one is not written in a book. <laughs> you have to have a walk with the person. And we together. And prayer is the way to that expression. What called the corona of the Holy Ghost is something that happens through prayers. Amen. Am I speaking to us? So as a believer, I'm trying to charge our heart to start to study scriptures about prayer. We go and get books about prayer. What do you know about prayer? If there are laws of prayer, do you know them? If there are kinds of prayer, do you know them? Do you know the law that governs them? If there's a situation, do you know which one of them to employ? Am I talking to us? So we need to understand that dimension. And the sacrifice of prayer is one of the expression of the priesthood. But you must know when to offer the right sacrifice and how to offer it. Amen. I will say prayer generally. Prayer must be prayed according to the will of God. Prayer must be what? So the sacrifice of prayer relates to offering prayers and intercessions and all manners of prayers according to the will of God. In Romans 8, chapter 26 to uh, 27, it says, I mean, 8, verse 26 to 27 says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps our weaknesses or infirmities. For we know not what we should pray for. What does that mean? So we don't know what we should what? pray for. As we ought. But the Spirit himself makes what? Intercession for us. With what? Groanings. With what? Groanings. And which cannot be what? Altered. And I said that he that searches the heart knows what? The mind of the Spirit. Because it makes what? Intention for us according to what? Now, a good example is Peter's case. You know, Jesus said to Peter, the devil has purpose to sift you as what? Like a wheat. He said, I've prayed for you that your faith will not fail. Ah, ah. When you are converted, <laughs> strengthen your brethren. That was why he said, you are going to deny me. Oh. So I'm thinking, ah, you know, some of us, we have a vision now. Imagine, not to this church, let's say there's a brother A. Now, I'm careful with examples because I found out things I say at times, they come to pass. So I don't use them as an example because it's a negative example. <laughs> so let's say there's brother A and there's brother B. And then brother B is having a vision. And God showed that brother A would deny brother B. You know, what will you do? We withdraw. Now God has shown me that I should not work with this guy. He's a betrayer. <laughs> you withdraw. Well, it's very clear. But just saw that vision that Peter would deny him and started to pray for Peter. Now, I thought it would be better to pray that, Lord, let Peter not go through this wala. That's the prayer point. But it was clear that Peter must go through it. So Jesus said, the devil will come and sift you as wheat. <laughs> you will pass through this challenge. However, there's one that is critical. I have identified by the help of the Spirit. So I pray for you that your faith will not fail. Because what he does, man is going for his faith to fail. I want to get that? Your faith will not what? Fail. So I thought you have a vision. Don't just start praying that it will never happen. Hello? Let's say God is wanting to trade a brother in financial stewardship. And God shows a vision of him going to a particular lack. And that lack may be part of the school of the spirit for him to enter financial worship. Not a pray. He must never lack. He must never lack. Your prayer is wrong. What you to pray is capacity. Eh? To persevere. Capacity not to go into sin. Capacity to walk through that time of life and come out strong. Am I talking to us at all? One of my people in church. Somebody came to them asking them for money. 
So he wanted to give him money. God told him, he's in a school. Don't abort his process. Ah, uh-uh. He's giving wrong. No. If that guy doesn't know God, he will give to abort the process. That's why you have, have a life of prayer. Am I talking to us at all? So, that example, Jesus prayed for Peter, and of course, Peter went through that stuff, but his faith did not fail by God's mercy. And when he was strengthened, he became a leader. Are we together at all? So, we need to understand that. So, there's that dimension of praying according to the will of God. Praying according to what? Please talk to me. Praying according to what? So, sometimes, the first thing in prayer is a prayer of asking questions, not prayer of praying a request. You are asking questions to know what you really, really pray about. And then you now begin to pray what you have no what to pray about. So that means that you are trying to know the will of God. And then now to pray it down. So, when you know His will, as it is in heaven, you now say, Lord, let it be done on earth as it is what? It is in heaven. So sometimes you are going through a particular issue, you are about to pray about it, and your prayer point can be wrong. And when you pray amiss, what happens? Say, we do not receive what we pray amiss. Are you with me? It's in scripture that people pray amiss. Are we together? People pray amiss. So, prayer is a subject that, as a priest, that asking the anointing, you must pay attention to. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Am I making sense to us? Because yeah. you are looking at me. I, I, I need to look at our faces. In the morning, you are just looking at me like this. So, I was wondering what is happening. All right. So, another thing I want to say is this. Prayer is a collective responsibility of the church. Prayer is what? That means that, okay, we don't leave prayer to prayer department alone. We should all pray. I learned from Dr. Nathan David that there's even no need to have prayer department. Don't do that, though. I learned from Dr. Nathan David. And because I'm connected to him as a son, I practice that. So, in our church, there's no prayer department. All of us will pray. Hello? Because it's our collective word, responsibility as a church. Amen. It's very important for us to really see this, that prayer is our collective response as a church. So, the eternal priesthood of Jesus, according to the order of Lake, is saturated with prayer for us to be perfected in what? The will of God. And our, royal priest, our own royal priesthood ministry cannot be expressed without prayers. In fact, it's enveloped in prayers. Are we together? I'm saying the priesthood of Jesus after the order of Melchizedek, that eternal priesthood, you know, it's eternal, is fully saturated with what? Prayer. That we, his people, will be perfected in the will of God. And I'm not saying that you, as a king and a priest, you cannot express your anointing and ministry of kingship and priesthood without expressing the true prayer. It's impossible. Prayer is, 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 is at the heart of the priesthood. Prayer, the service of prayer is major to the priesthood. You, are, you must learn how to function in it. Amen. There's a prayer of just building up your inner man, you know, build up, building, building internal energy or by the spirit. You know, praying the ghost. It's something that you should do from time to time. But do you understand the Lord that governs it? I remember his sister came to me one time we were practicing that. And the pastor was just praying in tongues. Uh, why? She doesn't understand. The people are praying in tongues. There are sometimes when you are praying in tongues, you are not productive if you don't make declaration in English or your own language. Because when you are addressing now, you have, you have generated energy. Use that energy to prophesy. It's different from just praying to build up your eternal son, the Holy Ghost. Amen. There's a way to convert inherent power from potential energy to kinetic energy around praying the Holy Ghost. We need to know it. If you don't know it, you won't generate anything. Have we together at all? So, we need to understand expressions in prayer. Amen? Paul, in scripture, is the major example for us as an apostle. Paul is an example in prayer. Paul prayed for his disciples. He prayed for churches he planted. Paul prayed for the Ephesian church. Remember that? Both in chapter 1 and chapter 3, he prayed for them. Paul prayed for Corinthian church. Paul prayed for the Philippian church. He prayed for people in Thessalonica. Are we together? He prayed for all these people. So, you see Paul praying. Even for Corinthian church, he prayed. And then in the book of Timothy, you see Paul praying again. 
Paul even said to Timothy that as far as prophecy that are concerning you are, you must wage a good warfare. There is a place of prayer in batting prophecy. Are we together? As we are asking about rain coming today, you know, for rain to come in this of, 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 of Elijah, Elijah went to a prayer mode. And that prayer mode was a persistent expression, like a woman that was laboring. So he was there, prayed the first time, second time, and we were checking the cloud. He continued praying. We call it push in those days when we were younger. That is, you pray until something happens. So he continued praying until the guy came back and said, I saw like the hand of a man. Aha. Uh -huh. Then he said to a guy, quickly get because it's about to rain. So the sound of rain did not remain the sound of rain. Elijah prayed until the sound of rain became a visible rain. Are we together? So many of us have contacted some dimension in the spirit, but we are not able to back them with our prayer life. So your prayer life, you incubate what has been spoken. You, your incubation is to transfer what is in the visible realm to the visible realm. So prayer is that vehicle or the vessel or the medium by which what is in the invisible that you have seen will become visible in your environment. Are we together? There are times you have seen something before it can happen. Hallelujah. So, you see that in scripture. So, Paul, you know, he prayed for the Corinthian church. For the Thessalonian church, he prayed. Philippian church, he prayed. Corinthian church, he prayed. And then he prayed for the Ephesian church. Hallelujah. In fact, when he was saying to Timothy, he said to Timothy, I exhort you. That's 1 Timothy 2, 1 to 4. He said, I exhort you, therefore, that first of all, supplications. That's the form of prayer. That also said prayers itself. That also said intercession. So, there are different kinds of prayers. I want to get that. He said, and giving of thanks, which is also a form of prayer, should be made for all men. All men is what? Is all men. And I said that for kings and for they that are in what? In authority that may do what? Lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is what? Good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who we have all men to be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Amen. Amen. Some of us don't pray for our neighborhood. I've seen people that don't pray for their companies. They are working in a company. They are only complaining and complaining and complaining. As a believer, that should not be so. There could be issues with that company. Have you ever prayed about it? Have you prayed for your MDs? Have you prayed for people that are your hiring department? I mean, in human resource? You know, you're a believer. Your response should be different. We are not saying that there are no something that are not bad in that company. But have you ever inter you, are, you are working there. What we can say the good of that company is to bring it to a place of intercession. Amen. And that's very, very important. Paul acknowledged uh, the compelling life of Epaphras. That was Colossians 4.12. He said, Epaphras, who is one of you? A servant of Christ saluted you. He's always laboring. How does he labor? He's laboring fervently for you. In what? Prayers. Prayer is labor. Prayer is what? That means that you know, let me give you this assignment, everybody. Just select 10 names in this church, 10 names, and decide that in the next seven days, you will pray over those names. Start by praying the Holy Ghost. I say, God, give me a focus of prayer for this person. You'll be surprised. Number one, you may end up spending three hours, four hours in praying. Number two, you will become prophetic. Because God, if God actually speaks to you about their matter, it will be what they have not discussed with you. And you'll be surprised that answers will come. And you'll be surprised that your life will begin to change. Hello? Hello? You can do your assignment. He said that he laid more infamously for you in prayers that you may stand perfect and complete in what? The will of God. That means that People need energy for the will of God. Hello? And for example, Jesus went to the cross, and before he went to the cross, he prayed that the cup should pass over him. At the point that was yielded to God, after he has yielded, the Bible said that angel came to strengthen him. So you have, can pray for people that, Lord, let them stand perfect and complete in your will. Because there are times that people can be weak and may not be able to stand perfect in his will. Are we together at all? So, prayer is important to every one of us as believers. Prayer is extremely important. Now, that's what I call develop, learning to develop prayer presence. Tell me more, learning to develop prayer presence. That is to say, 
prayer can give you entrance to places that you cannot go to physically. You can have entrance to any home, entrance to hospitals, entrance to any government office, the court room, where things are taking place. Prayer gives access in all mountains of influence. You know, Paul will say things like in 1 Corinthians 5, 4, and Ephesians 2, 5, you go and read it, that my spirit is with you. Have you seen that before? Let me read that in Ephesians 2, 5 for us. You, you will say Paul talk about his spirit being present. Not emo, his spirit being what? Present. Corinthians 2, 5, let me just read that to us. I go with Apostle really see this. It says that for though I be absent in the flesh, yet am I with you in what? In the spirit. That's only possible by prayer presence. I'm there with you in the spirit and I'm rejoicing. <laughs> I'm beholding your order and steadfastness of your faith in Christ Jesus. Are we together? Are we together? So, prayer can give you entrance into places. So, there's one called prayer presence. And that happens when you intercede for people and for places that God can help you to have access, glimpses by the spirit towards the happening there. So, he said, you know, he's present in the spirit, though he was absent in the body. The church that Paul established, they lived in mass in his prayers. They did what? The leader, they were immersed in what? In post prayer. Hallelujah. So, we need to develop prayer presence. It's very important for a real personal expression. And let me tell you some examples that, that, that I've seen. In fact, at times, when you get to the dimension of this one very well, you can see a meeting before the meeting. You can meet men in the spirit before meeting them physically. You can be in places in the spirit before being there physically. You know, I remember mean, this deja vu. I just talking to somebody. I just realized that this setting has happened before. Has happened to anybody here before? And then you tell yourself that when I was when this happened, there was a blue cup to my right, and you looked. There's a blue cup. Has happened to anybody before? And sometimes you're never able to remember when that thing happened because there are some of your dreams that you don't remember. You have been there before that day. I was together at all. I was together at all. I remember there was a meeting that we, we do in Abekuta. One of the years of that meeting, yeah, that was the year that that move happened. That was 2019. One of the days I was, I, I, I was, okay, I prayed, then I slept. As I was waking up, I was taken into the hall of the meeting. I was in my house, but I was also <laughs> in the hall of the meeting. I saw everything arranged, and I saw a particular spot in the meeting with the Shekinah glory, and I saw the cherubims full of eyes. So I remember that when I was, I was describing that in the meeting, and I was describing it everywhere scattered. Somebody that knows me there said that when I was describing it, it was seeing those living creatures full of eyes. Access into places by developing what? Prayer presence. So I'm trusting God that we're going to pay attention to our prayer life. Not just by praying. It's time to study on how to pray. There's a place of teach me how to pray. For example now, I see what I want to do longer prayer. There's a bit of longer prayer that happens spontaneously by the Holy Ghost. Meaning that um, you are praying, you are not praying to, you are not going to pray for long. You find yourself that maybe if you want to spend 30 minutes, out of the five hours, you are still there praying. For when you finish, it's five hours. And you have told you have spent five, 30 minutes. That's the Holy Ghost stretching you without you being aware of time. Are we together? But as a place of being determined to pray, you know, just to build up your strength, your spirit, I want to just stay at water level to like three hours. At times to like six hours, to like seven hours or 12 hours. Now, if you're going to pray 12 hours in tongues, if you are not taught how to pray 12 hours in tongues, or you come to people that do 12 hours in tongues, you discover that after one hour, you shall be tired. Somebody wants to pray 12 hours in tongues, and then in the first hour, you are shouting, shouting, walking. You are dissipating your physical energy. You don't pray that way. When I pray 12 hours in tongues, they, 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 they take it cool, because the journey is stiffer. So he's not talking, you can tell they are not praying. They are praying. Take it easy. Beat up. We are getting to the 11th hour. Uh -huh. 
or in between, there are some stirrings. So that thing can make you loud, but you have to know how to manage it. If not, your spirit will be willing, your flesh will be sleeping. Are we together? You have, you have to learn it. There was a time that regularly I do six hours and seven. Regularly. When I say regularly, I mean regularly. But there is a mode to do it. In fact, so the prayer is such that you may have to have a place. Because there is a pace you take that allows you to go the number of hours. If you change the location to another pace, that short pace will affect your prayer. If you have not practiced it, you will know what I'm talking about. That are times I want to stay in my house. I want to go for um, work back meetings. I want to come out of my house. Not just because I want to study in my library, but because I want to pray. And there's that space that you are used to. That is fine. That if you change that atmosphere, it can affect you. Are we ready to get at all? You can you, you feel restrained and then you soon get tired. Amen. Amen. Postures in prayer. The posts that you take in prayer, I assure you, you will sleep, you will sleep. So you manage postures in prayer so you will not sleep off. Amen. Amen. See, there are people that pray for long hours and they've developed the stamina to just lie on their bed like this and are like, And they are like that. Eight hours, they are done. My dear, what you are saying is capacity. If you try it, you shall sleep. <laughs> now, you know that happened. I'm still, I'm not joking. So, there's a place of training people. Of doing what? Uh, I tell people, don't try to steal what you don't know. Learn it normally. It's better. You know, in our church, we used to do 13 hours, 12 hours. So, we do it to everybody who pray. It'll be fine. So, the pastor, when I went back home, I had to do 13 hours, but I could not go more than two hours. Ah. I said, you're under corporate anointing. <laughs> that was church. When you went back home, your normal anointing showed up. Your anointing is two hours. So just relax. Do you get the point? Short capacity. So the, but what should I pray long? You are generating energy. You are doing what? You are doing what? Number two is like you are digging. Say digging. Now in that digging, there are different frequencies. There's a place you dig to. You have dreams consistently. You have dig to a place where dreams are common. I don't get my point. It's like you are ascending the spirit. Are we together? You know frequency. You know TV stations. You know they have different frequency. So let's say that AIT is the frequency for dreams. There's a place you pray to your spirit as you pray. As you, pray. you enter that light level called AIT. You know light has frequencies. Are we together? When you enter that place called dreams, you will find yourself having prophetic dreams consistently. Hello? I don't know if you like there was a say of your life that you're just having dreams constantly. You go and check it. There's a lifestyle that made it happen. But you're not aware. Are we together at all? There is a place where the writing anointing is just normal. Like a scribe. You're just receiving to write and write and write. I'm telling you by experience that it is real. Paul said, I pray in tongues more than you all. And Paul linked praying in tongues to mystery. He that speaks no tongues, speak it. You know? He said, you are speaking mysteries. Mysterion. Are we together? Yes, uh-huh. And Paul said that it's, about, it's mystery in Christ. So it's going between the mystery of speaking in tongues and post mystery in Christ. They are connected. I mean, you can look at the old church. I mean, imagine that, a old church. I said that, I pray in tongues more than you all put together. Can you know ah, Tos told us one day, he said, you know Reventos now? I said, ah, I'll tell Paul. <laughs> you don't pray in tongues when I mean. <laughs> it cannot happen. I'm serious. So, there's that dimension of life. Now, if you tell that I had a encounter with Jesus, well, he didn't tell you that there was a year that I prayed seven hours in the Holy Ghost every day. That is the high level of fasting. The discipline to do that every day. He didn't tell you that one. How did Egg start to get some mysteries? Egg just entered a place that will start praying, start praying. You realize that as they pray longs, things are happening. Scriptures are opening up, nothing are happening. Are we together? So, long hour prayer brings into frequency in the spirit where certain energies are released. It could be used just having constant revelation. Are you with me? You will see it. I'm serious. 
Look at that person say the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Am I still on point? Glory to Jesus. I still have some time. My time is finished. Glory to Jesus. Do I have time? Don't worry. Tomorrow I'll make it practical. Every time you say I'll make it practical tomorrow. I don't know. My time is finished though. Glory to Jesus. Are we blessed? Did that make sense to us? Ah. We can leave this page. We can leave this page. Say sacrifice of prayer. So, as a believer, you must know what it is and how to offer it. And there are different forms of it. Are we together? They are what? When I started to have issues with court boys as a lecturer, my dad is a believer. And they taught him certain things. My dad has taught me some things about prayers. If you are facing this kind of battle in your life, these scriptures, read them, understand them. If you pray with them, it will shift. Are we together? So I remember one of those days, I started to pray. And everything shifted. Hallelujah. So there's a place of being taught. There are legacies in prayer. You know, somebody was coming to meet me. Uh, okay, ah, you're online. Okay, imagine somebody meeting another pastor. Yes, now, meet another pastor. Glory to Jesus. And that's in that pastor. Ah, you know that I'm talking, I'm that pastor, so let's just leave it. Let's just, but I'll tell you what, you know, what person wanted to deal with? The thing that one pastor recommended for the person cannot work. You cannot break addictions by praying with a book of Psalm. The person was telling me about addictions and they recommended the book of Psalm for her. No, 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 no. How to deal with addictions? Going to the book of Romans. Hello? If you have issues with addictions, what should you go to? Romans. It will break. If I teach you how to, it will break. It will what? Haya. It will break. It's the key to break. You don't have to, you won't go to Psalms for breaking addictions. It's Romans. I cannot do that. Not, not the book of Psalms. Hallelujah. So I'm saying for us to do that is very important. So I want to pray for us that God will put fire on our altar. Amen. I said, God will put fire on your altar. Amen. I said, God will put fire on your altar. Amen. See, when the son of Sceva saw Paul cast out demons, he is sick. They also went to do likewise. So he said that by the Jesus that Paul preached. <laughs> We are joined to come out. The demon man became a gently and he beat them seriously. They said, Paul, we know. And Jesus, we know. Listen to me. Your visibility realm of the spirit is based on your prayer life. Huh? The quality of your prayer presence is what affects who you are in the spirit. I'm serious. I'm serious about this. And I'm, I'm not talking about, I'm talking about really understanding prayer and praying. That's why Daniel was powerful in Babylon. Are we together? The quality of your prayer life is very important. And never attacks it. And it was as it happened to that. Something happened for one week, you're not able to really pray. Just wave, don't, don't worry, just wave. Don't, don't, ah, you know. I mean, as it happened that, in fact, at the point, you want to pray, but you don't feel any energy. You will get there. It's like it's just a dry day. Listen to me. That's why meditation is important. The word of God is the wood that burns in prayer. It's the fuel for the praying person. He realized that there's this place of not having desire for prayer. Are we together? I will go and see some scripture. They are destiny scriptures for me. I will sit down with them. When you sit on it, sit on it, sit on it, somewhere you will burst forth. Are we together at all? Is everyone to understand that? So, that's why it's good to stay in the world consistently. What about when the world is not opening up? What I found out is this. There are scriptures that if you are a believer that has eaten to it, they steer you. They do what? They do what? There are stories that will steer your heart. That was what Sergio was talking about. Yeah, if I read about Stephen, I will pray. 
See, you don't understand that place, though. <laughs> you know, Bible said Jesus stood up. You know that he seated the heavens. He did what? He stood up. Ah, let me leave it. The Lord will help us the name of Jesus. So I'm trusting that God will help us in our prayers as a church. In fact, our influence in any territory has a lot to do with prayers. Read that Luke 4. After Jesus finished fasting, they said his faith went abroad. Not because he was going to preach, oh. It was that in the spirit, there was an influence that was spread in the spirit. His fear was nursed abroad. Where? Not the physical. Are you aware of that? Are we aware of that? If you need a place, then look for. Let me know zoom. Last scripture, and then we'll round up. Last scripture, we'll round up. So please, I want us to take this serious. So I'm saying that, let's answer that you know about prayer. Let's know about prayer. And I pray that we will rise up in prayer in the name of Jesus. It's not, to be a, it's not for you to be a prayer holic than any other thing. Look for, look for, look for, look for, look for, look for. Verse 1, I believe. And Jesus, 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 Jesus. Okay. Let's move to, okay, thank you. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him throughout all the region about. He had not preached anywhere. I was gonna. So this was something that happened in the realm of the spirit. Amen. There was a time I remember that I was to do a meeting and got to me into the spirit realm, and I saw the meeting being announced in the spirit realm. We had a particular kind of result that year. That means that God can announce our meeting. So you see some churches that you see that this is to me some of those big churches. They are not doing any gimmicks. Some of them, their pastors have touched a portal in the spirit. God has announced those meetings. Are we together? But by the boys meeting every first Friday of the month, there's no, they don't do publicity. It's out of mouth. It's always gathering thousands. And it's been like that consistently. It's the important the spirit. How you mean? I've been in a meeting that politician, Baba Politician was the minister in Lagos. The meeting will start around for the all night. I think around maybe around nine or ten o'clock. And by five o'clock, there's no more seat downstairs. Where we are, there was no more seat. But the first of the meeting, it will start like around 9 a.m. or so. We got there around to 7. We are already about 50 outside. When they opened the door, people were struggling, and, and I'm like, Kill day. But maybe I got there early, anyway. So, do you get my point? They reached, a, they touched a portal in the spirit. So there's a place of territorial governance. By prayer. And we can get there. We can what? So let's not let's not, no, not deceive you and say that people are, everybody's doing gimmicks. I'm telling you, everybody's not doing gimmicks. So I live in Ota. Everybody that about your depot, you're on your own. I live in Ota. Stop hearing false stories. I live in Ota. The man does evangelism. Oh. You're this, that, I, I didn't say the church. I mean, Babo Yedepo himself goes out for evangelism. Hmm? A pastor of 50 is not going out for evangelism. He's attacking somebody that is having more than 50,000 that is going out for evangelism. Does it make sense? Are you, not, are you getting my point? I'm serious. He goes out for evangelism. I'm not saying, I say, Babu, you take for himself. Do, does what? So when you ask somebody, say, hey, 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 his church is 50. He's doing evangelism. He's, 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 he's watching your own video. He's doing season fame. He's comparing himself with someone that goes for evangelism. He's not deceiving himself. Are we together? They have disciplined hours of prayers that they follow. In fact, if you told us one day, he said there was a day that Papa said that they should start praying in the school, in the Bible school. All of them thought they would just pray a few minutes or one hour and they would stop. Then they started praying, started praying, started praying, started praying, started praying, started praying. Then it's like people are going to the toilet, they're coming back. They will still be praying one day, <laughs> second day. Third day. Ah! They prayed for five days like that. They only go to the toilet, you come back. Ah, a little nap, you come back. He said, hey, no wonder. Now, this man, all of you don't know him. Do not attack a man like that and just say anything anyhow because you feel that he has some doctrinal issues. My dear brother, <laughs> know your uncle. 
God will keep you in the name of Jesus. I know you are a prophet, but may God help your life in the name of Jesus. I'm, t- I'm serious, you are equal in your fellowship, but you are not, not equal in your ranks. Not your uncle. Those fathers, just honor them. Je, 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 je. I live in Nota. If you are talking about you cannot, you cannot be my friend. You cannot be my enemy, but you'll be my friend. Because I want to allow you to use your poverty mindset to affect our ministry. I'm serious. Every person I've seen in Nota that attack that ministry, they don't grow. And I'm like, can't you see that this is an issue? Just solve it by honoring. Just honor the man and leave it alone. Those men know what a lot of us don't know. Have we together? He told us one day that when they go to altar, the place was so bushy, so he was to pray in the night. As he was praying, what happened was in the top place. As he was praying, but physically, not in the spirit, we were dropping dead. Down, down. And I was praying alone in the night, in dark hours. Some of you will be praying like that, and the boy just drop down, you run away. You now attack such a man. Listen to me, their strength is in their prayers. Papa the boy has been praying all night since when he was about 40 years old or for 70 years old. He's still doing it with his stick. Are you with me? So somebody that prays all night almost every time that he's not having any program. Consistently. And you have been snoring and snoring. No man, no man. You want to be on the same level? Even me that I'm small like this, eh, that I'm not in that realm. I can tell you that I cannot be the same level. Are we together at all? So, we should learn to pray as individuals. And let's learn to reawaken new creation prayers. What do I call it? I want to define as new creation prayers. All the polling prayers. Pray for yourself every day. Every day. Pray for your children. If you are discipling people, pray for people that you are discipling. The Ephesians 1, the Ephesians 3, the Colossians 1, Philippians 1, pray it in the nuclear prayer. If you pray it with your whole heart, with the expectation of an answer, changes begin to happen. Even the scales on scriptures will fall off. Am I talking to us at all? May not send us in the name of Jesus. And as a church, let's be a praying church. Let's be what? Let's have a time of protected prayer that will come together as a church. We now have a venue. If I have a venue like this, ah, <laughs> that's why I thank God for our venue. Because it means that I can decide every day to go there 7 a.m., pray first three hours, go back home to my library. That's what it means. Or start to pray five hours, seven to five, and then go back to my house. Every day. I'm not going anywhere. Every day. Every day. Let, let's, let's pray. Let's, let's, let's find time to pray. Find a time in the month as a church. And come here and pray. Ah, but pastor, I'm tired. And stay there. By the time you do it for three months, you don't be tired again. How about together? Let's have time that we pray like that. And let's have time that we're just having this week of prayer. We just come here. After work, six to eight, we pray. By eight, we go home. Sorry, I've taken our time, but this is important. There'll be a shift. If I'm ministering in some water, most times, the anointing flowing is a bit easy because it's not, only, it's not only based on my strength alone. It's also based on the corporate environment. You know why? By the prayers of the saints offered over time, there's a potter created in place. So the delicate movement is very easy. I'm serious. Until COVID post us, we have a monthly 13 hours of prayer. You come to church 6 p.m., there'll be worship team singing, changing, you know, up and bow method. They'll be changing every two hours. I'm told they will leave for two hours, non-stop. If you worship to leader and you live like, like that, you have capacity enlarged? Yes. In fact, in the post, there are new songs. By the time you finish one that you know. <laughs> Oh, forever. And then they would sing like that, changing it hours by hours till 7 a.m. in the morning. So at times, somebody would do 5 to 7, I mean, 4 to 7, then they would do it. Because that was only like 3 hours. But others are praying 6 to 7, 8, 9, 12 a.m. Somebody said they are tired in the middle of it, they want to sleep. Sleep and wake up. 
but it was creating a portal. It was what? And it's an environment free for God to move and walk easily. Do we get that? Do we get that? It's not even about just the location. It's about what you carry in your heart when you're praying. Our next program now will not be holding now our own. By God's grace, after the meeting I'm having this coming week, I'm starting a particular location of prayers myself. It's not one hour every day for the program. I'm not fasting, no. I'm praying. That means I'm, not, I'm going to be praying for the meeting. I will carry the picture of that place in my spirit. Trust God as you come there like this. Innumerable number of angels. Spirit of just men. We gather with us. Let us to our feet. I hope I make some sense to us. Because this one that I'm sharing with us, some of our faces that I don't look at, they are really interesting. So can we just pray that God make us a praying church? Why am I saying that? That other people want to get tired. Make us a praying church. Can you pray if the person leading just give a prayer point and it didn't stop you until the next two hours? Those of us cannot pray that way. That's where we learn to pray. They will give us all the prayer points. And it's when the leader stops that you stop. We just give you like three prayer points. Then the leader is praying, you know, he's praying, he's praying, he's praying, he's praying. One hour, two hours, three hours, four hours. So you are forced to follow. I took one brother like that with me when I was in UI to pray. So I gave him all the prayer points. I started praying for around 10 in the night. So he thought maybe by 12, we'll pause and come back together again. He didn't know that I'm stopping 5 a.m. in the morning. I just continue praying, 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 praying. At the point, he just left that. <laughs> this brother, he just left. I continued, I continued, continued. So, in fact, that day, I didn't really stop to fight because it was still more. So I pressed it like that. And it was looking like, what, what is this? That's the way some of us grew up. So it's not easy if I say, okay, three of us will put together for seven hours. I'll be doing it alone. So together means that corporate anointing, ah, it, 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 it's easier. You get my point? If you've done it alone before, you can do it with a couple of people, but if you go and now try it alone, you realize that uh, it's not, this cannot be flesh and blood. So pray that Lord, make us a praying church. Give us prayer stamina. Prayer stamina. Prayer stamina in the name of Jesus. And then I trust God, believe that Pastor Timothy, Pastor Fumi, they have taught us on prayer, and they will teach us more, and we will practice what they have taught us. We will go and practice it. And each of us can claim a personal prayer diary where we have results that you can point to it that I prayed, God answered. After we prayed, God answered. That will be so in Jesus' name. I'll just pray. Father, we talk to you, we trust you to help us. We pray in the Holy Ghost, we build our edifice. We rise to you, Almighty God. I will tell you, help our lives and more Jesus. Lord, we ask that you strengthen us in our inner man to stand strong in the place of prayers. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord, we trust you, God, that we're able to offer sacrifice of prayer day by day in our lives. Father, I ask for fire on the altar of every family that is represented here. Fire on your altars in Jesus' name. Fire on the altars in Jesus' name. We take away the arches of past achievement in prayer. I will ask for fresh fire in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Listen to me. One straight road to seeing eyes, hearing ears, and knowing art is sacrifice of prayer. Hello? It is what? You cannot be a praying person and not be prophetic. It's not possible. Every genuine praying person is automatically going to be prophetic. Because your eyes will open, your ears will open, and you will start to know. I cannot start sharing encounters in prayer, but I've had encounters in prayer. I've had what? There was one time I finished praying and lied beside my wife, and Jesus came in. And he touched me, my hands. Straight went into my hands. The next day meeting, oh my God, things happened. But I didn't tell anybody that Jesus came to my room. 
Are we together? Are we together? <laughs> there was one, I was in a place and there was power released. Such that went through my body. I know that the meeting will be powerful. You don't get the point. It is not like, you know that this meeting, ha, you don't say, and God is here. <laughs> you are not, you know that what? God is what? Is there. Amen. Amen. You don't know what that they will tell you that those people will tell you that they were praying, they felt God's part of their body, and they thought that they would die. They said, no, it's too much. Eh? You don't know that kind of experience? You don't know that kind of experience? People like Shasfini put our work with God, they will tell that they are praying. They felt electricity passing through our body. That man said, one day's fast. One of the days I was lying down. It's like they are passing charges. Pram! To my body. Zoom, zoom. Zoom, zoom, zoom. I didn't pray for charges, though. <laughs> but I'm talking about encounters and prayers. We had to do one healing service. I had prayed with and God for the meeting. The day before the meeting, I was just talking to some people. I just felt this strange power. Bam! Through my hands. Da! I checked like this. I was talking again. He went to a room. There was one, I'll be missing invitation in the night. I was holding the mic. It's as if my hand was being electrocuted. I thought it was the mic. It just pam. It was the Lord. You are not going to be looking for the experiences. A true prayer journey will take you to the real God dimension allocated for you in your destiny. Do we get it? God bless you. I'm taking our time.